So the the next thing we want to do is to remember like scale the walkers and and get more Docker coins. But at this point, I'm not going to use kubectl scale. I want to do that from a web UI, and so that's a good excuse for me to introduce the Kubernetes dashboard. So we're going to do a few things here. We're going to deploy the dashboard, um, and then we we will have to set up uh, authentication for the dashboard. Uh, and expose the dashboard so that we can connect to it. So, <clears throat> at first, if I uh, if I look at what the dashboard is, it, it, there are multiple things. There is a deployment. There are services. There might be a few sec extra security objects, etc. So, in, instead of having a bunch of kubectl commands, um, I'm going to use a bundle of YAML that has been prepared for us and that will uh, deploy the dashboard. So, if we run that command, so kubectl apply dash f, and then that YAML file, this is going to install the dashboard for us. So this is the first. Um, I don't want to really call that a package because that would be really a, a big name for what is just a, 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 um, a little bit of YAML. But it's it's a kind of way to not have to wonder about exactly okay what what do I need to create now I just have this YAML file I load this YAML file in my cluster it creates a bunch of resources and I'm good so I'm going to look at that YAML before I apply it blindly so I go to my uh, container training directory here I have a subdirectory which is key8s and that directory contains a bunch of YAML files that we are going to this afternoon uh, including uh, the Kubernetes dashboard.yaml. If I look at that file, I have a bunch of comments, and then I have like uh, a secret. And then here it, it's not super clear, but you can see three dashes. So in, in the YAML, like three dash lets me have a, a YAML containing multiple objects. So this YAML file contains a secret. And then a service account, then it contains a role, then it contains a role binding. So all these things like we haven't seen yet, so we don't exactly know what it is. But then we have more familiar objects. We have a deployment, and we have a service. And that's it. So when I will load that YAML, it's going to create all these resources. Demonstration, kubectl apply dash f kubernetes dashboard.yaml. It's so it's telling me, hey, I created a secret and a service account and a role and a role binding and deployment and a service. Okay. So the dashboard is now up and running on the cluster, but we can't connect to it yet because <clears throat> if I do kubectl uh, get services, all namespaces. Uh, that's not very convenient, but what I want to see is here. That's my Kubernetes dashboard. It's a cluster IP, so it's available from the inside of the cluster, but not from the outside. So to make the dashboard available from outside, I'm going to load another YAML file um, that that's going to expose that the, the, the dashboard. Um, so that YAML file here is socat.yaml. So what is this doing? Um, the dashboard is exposed. If, if you look again here at the output, it's exposed on port 443. So that HTTPS. So it's protected by a certificate. It's a self-signed certificate. And so here I'm going to do something which is uh, a very bad practice from a security standpoint, but just for convenience. I'm going to expose um, the dashboard in plain HTTP and then transform these HTTP connections into HTTPS connections to the dashboard. And for that, I'm going to use SOCAT. Uh, SOCAT is the Swiss Army knife of, of sockets. Uh, it's a little bit like Netcat. Uh, and with SOCAT, I can do stuff like uh, accept connections on this uh, TCP socket and then connect over this Unix socket or use TLS or accept UDP packets and then transform that into TCP, etc., etc. 
So here I'm using SOCAT in a mode where it accepts plain TCP connection. It forwards them over TLS connections. So again, um, I, I don't know much about SOCAT. Um, i just given this YAML file. If I look into SOCAT.YAML, I see that I have a deployment, and then I see that I have a service, and I'm just going to load that YAML file. So kubectl apply-f socat.yaml. Okay. Now what? So now if I do uh, kubectl get services dash dash namespace cube system socat, I see that socat um, is available on node port 31967. So when I connect to that, I will essentially talk to the Kubernetes dashboard. Let's do that. So, 31968. Um, I got the port number wrong. Let me fix that. All right. So when I connect to the Kubernetes dashboard, it asks me uh, which identity I want to use. Because the, the dashboard itself, it's a little bit like kubectl. It's a client to connect to Kubernetes, but it needs credentials. And by default, it doesn't have any credential, and so it, it can't show me anything. So I can, I, I can use one of three things. I can pass a kube config file, so I can upload a, a kube config file, and then the dashboard is going to extract the credentials from that kube config file. Another option, uh, is to pass a token. So that's about security. So. It's, I, I could create a token and, and use that token. Uh, or I could just use skip, which means basically use a default account. I'm going to do that because it seems simpler. So the dashboard loads. So you, you can see here like all the different sections of the dashboard. But uh, I'm using a guest account that has no privileges. The guest account doesn't have access to anything. And so here I'm going to see a bunch of error messages, for instance, um, user system service account cube system Kubernetes dashboard cannot list resource config maps in API group in namespace default. That basically means the guest account, the default account of the dashboard doesn't have access to, to these objects. It doesn't have access to anything. So at this point, the dashboard is pretty useless. So I need to do a third thing to make that dashboard useful. I will give, um, permissions to the dashboard default account. And the way that I'm going to do that is by loading yet another YAML, um, which, which has a, a very ominous name. It's grant admin to dashboard. And as the name implies, it grants admin privileges to the dashboard default account. This is probably not something you want to do on a real cluster. But on these ones, that's fine. So, kubectl apply dash f grant admin to dashboard. And this is creating an object of type cluster role binding. Okay, fine. I go back to my dashboard. I hit reload. And now I get a bunch of um, satisfying green pie charts telling me that all my deployments are okay, my pods are okay, my replica sets are okay, everything is okay. So that's the Kubernetes dashboard. 